This video will show you how Joël Macrel, who lives in the Calvados region of Normandy in France, builds his top bar hives using a combination of reclaimed timber from shipping pallets and straw with a special plaster coating. This will not be word for word translation, but should give you the important points if you don't speak French. So the straw is from a long-stemmed variety of rye, grown without artificial fertilizers or pesticides, which must be cut by hand. I should imagine that reeds, such as those used for thatching, would also work well if rice straw is not available in your area. Joël has made a wooden frame to make it easier to sew bunches of straw together with uh, packaging tape. The straw mat is about five centimeters or two inches thick when finished. And you can see how he's, sh uh, how he's sewing the bunches together using a wooden peg to create space to push the packaging tape through and then tying it together at the top. The straw has to be quite tightly pulled together. Donc là c'est la la partie un petit peu plus technique là de, de construction euh, qui diffère un petit peu d'une d'une construction avec. Euh, you can see the hive is built with uh, rebates and those are made from scraps of pallet wood uh, to accept the sewn straw bundles. Um, obviously a good fit is important, so you need to get your measurements right. Et une mâchoire pour euh, pour la terre aussi parce que en séchant la terre a tendance à, à se rétracter un petit peu donc c'est plus joli de, de remettre. You can see that the woodwork has been scorched with a blow lamp, which helps to make it more water resistant. Uh, this process is also commonly used in Japan on their hives and uh, may also be worth doing on the inside of any hive as an alternative to varnish. And you can see how the straw bundles are fitted into the slots. Donc là on a on a aussi j'ai pas fait voir c'est l'entrée qui est prévue You can see the entrances uh, where he's pointing right now just at the bottom there there's one entrance either side of that central uh, piece and there are I think about 20 centimeters long and, and about a centimeter high une autre planche pour pour l'habillage Et ensuite on 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 There's a retaining piece of wood at the top to hold everything together and there's the finished structure before plastering. You can see that Joel's hives have hinged roofs, which is, uh, I think, a very good feature. This hive is quite short, it's slightly under a metre, uh, which means that you may need to remove honey from it fairly regularly if you're in a good area, so as to avoid uh, get, uh, getting honey bound. On, a, on, on va mettre une couche de un mélange de de bouse de vache et de d'argile, euh, de cendre et de et de petit lait, et ce qui va donner une très très bonne isolation. Donc le, cette ruche là, bon là, chacun peut la construire comme il veut, euh, mais euh, là j'ai fait un toit facile à ouvrir où on découvre le. Bah, you can pareil. see. Joel's top bars have V-shaped comb guides, which is a good thing. Helps keep the comb straight. And now we come to the plastering process, which is a fun bit, I think. Uh, the recipe should appear below this video, and it's basically a bucket of cow dung from hay-fed cows, mixed with, which we'll see in a minute, a couple of things. Ça va suffire pour le pour réaliser so here's le our bucket of cow dung. 
Now Joel is adding half a bucket of wood ash. Alors, je précise que la bouse de vache est issue de de, de, de vaches nourries exclusivement au foin, euh, parce que le, ça donne une structure euh, plus, euh, plus plus pailleuse, plus. I don't know how he arrived at this recipe, but uh, that's just what he does. So tenue, I'm sinon, just telling uh, you what he's saying. And uh, now he's adding uh, half a bucket of. Alors c'est un problème de trouver euh, de, de loam, de finely sieved loam, foin, or clay, I think, would also be okay to use here. Yeah. 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 There's going to be quite a lot of mixing involved here, I think. And now he's adding a quantity, small quantity of lime, which is used for uh, lime mortar. I think it's called aerialized lime or aerial lime in some places. So he's mixing this dry at the moment. And now he's going to add a quantity of whey, which is essentially the leftover from making cheese, it's the uh, liquid part of the milk once the uh, cheese making process is underway, as it were. And that's going in here, this is, this is obviously organic, from organic milk. And, uh, that's getting mixed in, so I guess you need about the right amount to make a, a smooth, handleable plaster. Inevitably quite a lot of mixing involved here. certain que là pour le moment bah, euh, c'est pas trop agréable parce qu'il y a une bonne une bonne odeur de bouse de vache mais quand ça sera sec il n'y aura aucun problème le mélange sera dur et ça ne nuira pas aux abeilles So now the plaster is applied to the straw with a trowel. Donc il faut en mettre un bon centimètre, mais pas plus. Hein. And it wants to be about a centimeter thick, or about half an inch, I guess. And now he's making a a gap down the middle so that he can screw on the wooden retaining piece which is uh, got a I guess a five millimeter rebate each side to uh, retain the cow dung plaster So uh, end pieces work in the same way. And then the plaster is finished off to make a nice neat finish. You don't want any gaps there, obviously. 
Donc l'intérêt de, de cette petite garniture, là, c'est que j'ai fait une, une encoche. Et quand la, si l'enduit le, en séchant a tendance à, à se rétracter, euh, ça permettra de, de bien le tenir. Sinon, c'est pas joli. And it's important to leave this hive once it's been plastered in a shady place. You don't want direct sun on it because otherwise it will dry too quickly and the plaster will crack up. So if you use this kind of technique, put your hive somewhere shady and it will take, it'll probably take a couple of months to dry out fully, but it shouldn't crack because it dries that way. So there's the finished hive ready to be put on its stand and the combination of straw and cow dung plaster should make a nice thick layer of insulation for that hive. Here you see the result, a nice comb of honey. All capped. Nice and straight. And that's going in the box. Oh, Olivier is pointing out the queen there, there's a marked queen. Elle est belle, ponte, qu'elle fait, elle est en pleine santé. Donc on a au moins 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, There's another comb with a decent 18, amount of honey 18, on it. Mm. Celui-là, il est encore plus beau. Celui-là, il fait pour loin de 2 kilos. Mm. Uh, anyone that tells you that top bar hives don't make a lot of honey, I think, should be uh, made to watch this video. This comb weighs something over 2 kilos, so well over 4 pounds. That's just one comb. Parfait. Alors cette colonie qui est un essaim de l'année s'est beaucoup développée, a fait beaucoup de miel et on a récolté à peu près 15 kg de miel. So this seems to be a very productive hive that's good for the bees and it provides them with a well insulated space which they can maintain easily at the temperature that they prefer. So if you can get hold of the right materials this looks like something well worth trying.